Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information and today it's all about leather and how we're going to look after it especially if we stay in lockdown for a long time how we're going to preserve the car during that period if you can't use your car for say six months or even a year then we're going to have to prepare the car so that it's not going to go to fall to pieces while it's just sitting there outside as mine will be or in a garage so the first episode of the lockdown series regarding getting cars ready to be put away for a while will be about leather. So we don't want all the leather to dry out and start cracking because that would be an awful waste. So the leather in my E31 isn't too bad at all. I mean the passenger seat looks absolutely perfect. Slight sort of veins on the side but not much. The passenger seat's starting to look a bit more worn. Now all these sort of cracks and things, they just sort of add to the character of the seats. But what we don't want to happen is these marks start getting to a point where it will tear. And uh, so we can do a few things. First of all, we can clean the leather. That's always good for it. Um, and then we can colour in these marks in the leather. Um, and then we can put a protective layer over it. Uh, so that even in harsh conditions, the, these seats aren't going to fall apart. And that's very important because even though you can replace parts of, say, the engine quite easily and get all sorts of bits and bobs for engine, you can't for the leather. Um, once the leather's gone, it's gone. And, uh, yeah, you're pretty, pretty stuffed. Then you'd have to send the seats to a renovator. And that's not only expensive, and it probably won't happen during lockdown. But also, it's a lot of effort getting the seats out of these cars. They do really weigh a tonne. They're excessively heavy. And that's for good reason, because of course they incorporate not all, only all the motors and stuff, as normal cars do, but of course they're the, the seat belt anchor as well. The seat belt actually goes into the uh, side part of the headrest, and the inertia part of it's down, further down in the seat. So, yeah. The, way, the seats weigh a ton, they really do, and they're awkward to get out. So my plan has always been to try and keep the leather in reasonable conditions so that I never have to be forced to pull the seats out. And uh, so today what we'll do is we'll go through the process of looking after your leather, especially if the car's not going to be used for a while, to make sure it's not going to dry out. Right, to start with, what we'll do is have a quick look at the leather, see what we need to do. If we need to do any corrective work. Yeah, so this is the side bolster. Uh, it's usually the bit that gets worn out first. It's not looking too bad. We'll clean that and then put a bit of colour on it. And that should do for that nicely. And the side is also the bit that comes a cropper. Let's turn you around. So there we go. So we've got some cracks in there. That's the worst one there, but that's that's okay. We can fill that with colour. Well, first of all, clean it, fill it with some colour, and then put a protector on it. And obviously it looks worse than it is from that close-up. I think that's actually what it's like. But have a damn good close-up look, and you can see that. Let's see if I'm focusing on that. So there's a few cracks, and as I say, we can fill them up with a, a leather colourant. And that also adds protection and then we'll do a final protection over the top of it and obviously where i sit got these sort of deep marks here i'm not too worried about those i can make them lighter but they're not damaged they're just sort of a bit of character in the leather that is so yeah they don't look too bad at all so overall the seat's not too bad i mean certainly not too bad for sitting in there for 170,000 miles. Certainly can't complain about that. Leather's still in good condition. Yeah, that's good. Passenger seat is fine. Um, obviously not used as much. Um, that's got a few cracks in it, like the other side, and I'll whip you around there. Righty-ho, so we can have a look at this. That not too bad at all. So yeah, hardly anywhere at all. And the last time I coloured it, it obviously it was very effective because I can't really see any marks in that at all now. No, that's great. That side's perfectly okay. 
Right, so I think what we'll do is, rather than do the whole seat, we'll do just a bit of it. So we'll do this part here and this bit here, um, and the side bolster as well, because uh, they're the areas that really need sorting out. But when you clean the leather, it's best to do the whole seat. And I use, because I use all Zeno stuff, if I can find it. It's just stuff that uh, I've been using for years. I don't know if it's the best, I don't know if it's the worst. I haven't really got a clue, got no affiliation with the company at all. They don't pay me to do this. But I do find Zeno does tend to work very well. So that's why I use it and no other reason. Okay, so this is Zeno Leather Soft, which is a spray cleaner. And it gently cleans fine leather. That's what it says on the bottle anyway. Um, so yeah, we're, we're keep ourselves to these three areas. So give it a clean first of all. And when you clean, you'll find that it, the veins actually get a lot darker. So I use the Zeno and then just a normal microfiber cloth. And you have to keep the microfiber cloths uh, separate to any other of the Zeno products. So each of the things like the, the cleaner has its own cloth and is kept in a little bag. And then the colorant and all the rest of it has its own separate bags. Run a bit short of that. Got enough of this though. So yeah, give that sort of circular cleaning. I'll clean the overspray as well while I'm here. Now there are hundreds of cleaners on the market and saddle soap is the is the one people talk about the most, but I do find saddle soap just a bit harsh for the, these sort of leather, especially Nappa leather, which is what this is, this is champagne Nappa. And I find it, it leaves it just a bit too dry for me. Uh, whereas this stuff uh, leaves it soft, then it smells pretty good as well. Okay, so that's the bottom bit, side bolster neck. There we go. Was well, someone complaining about something? Okay, so there we go. Okay, so that's, we'd use the leather cleaner all over the whole seat. And obviously don't forget all the leather in the rest of the car because the door panels are leather and all these side bits are and so on. But the seat is obviously the bit that gets all the use. So once we cleaned it and sort of let it dry for a few minutes, then we can color in these veins. And for that, I use, I can find it. Here we go. Righty ho. So I've tried a few things. I've even made up my own polish, uh, but this is uh, renovating polish from automotive products. I got it through eBay and they know all of the uh, BMW colors. So this is champagne for the champagne Napa. And this is a renovating polish. So it will fill in the, the veins in the leather, but it also will leave it nice and smooth as well. And rather than just sort of smear it everywhere, um, as you would if you're sort of coloring a whole seat, I prefer just to push it into the veins of the leather. So I don't want to change the color of the leather because the color of the leather sort of uh, defines how much the seat's been used and it, it gives the, the seat character. So I don't, just don't want to color, color the whole seat. It'll take ages and it won't be exactly the right color either. They never are, and even with uh, professionals who make the polish, uh, they can never get exactly the same color. Okay, so we're going to put the renovating polish into the veins. So rather than using a circular motion, which is what they um, recommend, what I do is I just move it across the vein. So we've got this vein here. And uh, I'll just show you what I mean. Let's put a bit of polish on the cloth and then just go across it like that. And that just pushes the polish into, the, into those marks. And it really does make quite a difference. Um, and what I try not to do is sort of color the whole seat like this. So just a case of pushing it into the veins. 
and then what I'll do is I'll uh, quickly whip the rest of the polish off. But I'll do the whole side of that one first. So all these veins go across them and it pushes it into them. And if you've got a bit where it hasn't fully covered it, like this bit here, actually that's not too bad at all. There we go. Now push it into all of these veins. If you hit the uh, binding, so get rid of that again, because it will set on there. There we go. So across the veins, fill them up. There we go. So yeah, those big veins there, these ones here are the worst. And they don't look too bad at all. Yeah, they sort of disappeared altogether, they have. Of course, you can still see them in profile, but yeah, just push it in, give it a good squashing in, like that. And uh, then what we can do is just give it a quick buff, and that'll get rid of most of the polish from the rest of the seat. As I said, we don't want to colour it. I'll bung that back in the bag. And then a polishing cloth, another microfiber cloth, but one which hasn't had polish on it. So very lightly, we'll just move it around and we'll get rid of the excess polish. Now it's quite possible that it comes back out again and we can reapply it. There we go, nice and smooth. So, so it feels smooth afterwards. And there we go. That's all there is to it. How's that looking through there? Not bad at all. So that's got rid of those veins. And we'll do the same for these bits here. And we'll leave this to dry. And that's the reason I rubbed it before it had dried. Because I wanted to get it off the rest of the seat. I didn't want it to stay on the seat because it will change the colour slightly. Might be exactly the right colour, but it's <laughs> doubtful. Radio. So do the same thing on these bits here and on the bolster. They're not too bad. Oh dear, a bit more of this stuff. All right, let's see what it does on these veins here. It'd be interesting to see. Right, yeah, let's start with this one. There we go. That's quite Amazing really, isn't it? How quickly it fills up those gaps. So at this point, if you're doing the whole seat, you know that it would be nice and supple everywhere. And it's not going to suffer any damage in storage. That's about all I need to do on that one. Oh, a little one here. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll redo that one there. That took a bit too much out. Could have left it just slightly longer, so that's back in again. Rightio, let's move on to the bolster. And this has the same problem, it has cracks. And we just go across the cracks and it'll fill them in. And as I say again, I don't want to change the colour of the seat. So this sort of polish can be used for just doing the whole seat. But I'm really not interested in that. Quite happy with the character of the car. So yeah, put a bit more in. If you rub it out again, <laughs> put another lot in. Any more cracks? Nah, nah, that doesn't look too bad at all. So that's looking a lot better. I can probably get that just slightly better there. There we go. And of course it does two things. It obviously changes the uh, the appearance of the leather because it fills in these gaps in it and also it, it supples it up as well and it protects it so we're not getting any stuff going through the leather so yeah I mean that looks a lot better and uh, that's all I really need to do to that I'm quite happy with the rest of the seat it's sort of slightly different color to the other one but that's because I've been sitting on it for however many tens of thousands of miles and that's what you'd expect and i have cleaned this whole seat already with the uh, leather cleaner and uh, yeah there doesn't seem to be any other damage to the seat at all i mean it looks fine 
couple of scuff marks just here and there for instance up here I'll fill those in but uh, don't spill the in fact it looks slightly lighter so I'll just pull that off again yeah that's better so it fills in that crack mark over there but uh, that's fine rest of it looks lovely looks fine so really there isn't much more to be done on that seat that's got all the cracks sort of filled in again doesn't seem to be anything that worrying at all about that no that looks fine so yeah very important if you're going to put your car away for a while uh, use a leather cleaner one which has got sort of agents in it to retain its uh, subtle uh, suppleness and uh, yeah it'll be fine and what I do after this lot is all sort of set is I'll use um, uh, another Zeno product called uh, leather in a bottle and that not only makes uh, the leather very supple and is protected it also makes it smell like new leather it's uh, quite amazing the smell of it people do get in the car sometimes and say oh your leather it smells like a new car yeah, it's leather in a bottle. That's what makes the make it smell like it's new leather. So there you go. I just need to let that um, dry, and uh, yeah, then we'll put leather in a bottle on it. I put all my stuff back in its plastic bags. Um, I say again, the bits you've got to make sure that everything stays separate. So the applying cloths, which is this one, the polish and that, that's got its own polythene bag that it sits in. Clean has got its own uh, bag and so has the uh, leather in a bottle and they've got their own bag and they've got their own cloths because you don't mix them up if you start mixing them up then you make a complete pig's ear of it but yeah you didn't do up ending do end up owning a lot of uh, cloths I'm afraid but you can get them for 20 for a, a few quid so it's not no great loss and uh, yeah, on another episode, I'll show you how to do engine detailing, i.e. making the engine bay look great, just using microfiber cloths and soapy water, and that's all you need. And that's all I use on this car. Okay, so here we go then. That's uh, not looking bad at all. I can do a little buff on that, or do I need to? It doesn't, a bit of leather around, a bit kind of sprayed around there, but that's fine. That one there too, so I'll buff that a bit. Buff that very lightly, and there you go. That looks lovely. It looks ready for another hundred thousand miles if ever I saw it. Good. Um, the other thing I'm say on the individual cars, of course, they have this piping up here, it goes all around the seats and the headrests, um, and this is always done in a contrasting colour. Where it usually is, I have seen one which is uh, the same colour as the seat, but normally they're in a contrast and they do wear off, uh, the colour wears off of them very easily. Now all that I use on these is a Sharpie. Um, that's all you need. If you're cat candy like I am, you can put a bit of uh, masking tape down each side and then just use a Sharpie to fill them back in again. It really is as simple as that and it's, it keeps them looking the right colour. Now, if it really is damaged and you need to sort of protect it and get it recolored then you can use acrylic paints and that works really well but you have to make sure you have it masked off perfectly because you don't want acrylic paints on the leather so yeah we use a masking tape and make sure we mask off both sides and then we'll mix up some acrylic paints to be exactly the same color and that's not too bad you can get sort of acrylic paints from craft shops and you can get the color exactly right and it doesn't really matter if it's slightly off color you can mix a bit more and put it on again and it'll cover the previous coat and that will uh, produce an acrylic cover to the leather and uh, that will stop it wearing anymore so that works so two methods you can use sharpie just for this uh, to get the color back in it because it does wear through to be the same color as the, this leather and or acrylic paints um, and acrylic paint is more permanent but i haven't used that on this bit yet that's just been done with a sharpie and you just keep a sharpie in there down here somewhere oh sorry excuse me there we go put a sharpie there get one close to the right color and just paint it back in again and that's easy and it takes you five minutes and if you're cat candy like me you need masking tape as well so you don't want it on the leather 
Okie doke, so while I've been talking, the stuff has dried quite sufficiently enough. So we can put on uh, leather in a bottle next. So I put all of these things back into their own bag uh, so I don't get the cloths muddled up. Very important, don't get your cloths muddled, muddled up. So it's got its own set for bag, a couple of cloths in there. There we go, that's uh, kept separate. And so all these sort of leathery stuff is kept in here with its cloth and stuff like that. I seem to have lost my leather in the bottle, so I'll go and get that. Okie dokes, leather in the bottle reclaimed. So more Zeno stuff, a little bit left in there. It's not cheap, this stuff, um, but it does work. I mean, the proof is in the seat, really. Uh, as I say, that 170,000 miles sitting in these seats, uh, and they don't look too bad at all. Just give it a quick shake. I find a new place on the cloth. Now I'm sure there's going to be millions of leather experts out there saying you've done it all wrong. Well, I don't really care. I've done it well enough over these years to keep my car looking nice. And that's all that matters. And it's the same with rotary polishing. I had quite a few people saying you're doing it all wrong. I don't mind that either because the cars, well, they speak for themselves. And they're old cars as well. Okay, so leather in the bottle, just sort of wipe it on. Try not to wipe all your hard work off. And that's all there is to it. Just put it on smoothly uh, without pulling the rest of the stuff back out again. And then that'll form a nice uh, protective layer for the leather. There we go. It will darken down the veins when you first put it on. That's because it sinks in, but uh, after a few seconds, that will dry back out and go uh, end up at the colour it was. So, yeah, we notice if you do it on this bolster, for instance, they'll, they'll darken down, but I can assure you they'll brighten back up again. <laughs> Get off. And we can then just put leather in a bottle all over the seats, uh, headrests, and the rest of the leather, the rest of the leather in the car, like the door panels, they all look fine, so they don't need to do any cleaning. But leather in the bottle is perfect for that sort of work. Just stuff it on and it'll make the leather really supple. And uh, so yeah, stop it from cracking. So obviously the cars stay out all year. And uh, I bet this year it's going to be really sunny because there's so little pollution in the air due to the lockdown that we're in at the moment. Ah, look at that, smells just like a new car now headrests righty ho well i'm pleased with that that doesn't look too bad at all to me i forgot to say you can actually use leather in a bottle for vinyl surfaces it's good for vinyl so all of this stuff here i've just done with leather in a bottle and it looks lovely cleans it up and leaves a matte finish so not a gloss finish don't want that on your dashboards and yeah so look it's a lovely job it does it looks really nice afterwards done the steering wheel done the door cards they're all nice and clean and smell nice now yep everywhere that they're sort of leather and vinyl i've used it and it really does give a nice finish yeah very pleased with that door cards all done as well um yeah very important to do that if you've got csi or the standard door panels uh, keep the leather in the door uh, supple as well so you don't want that to crack so it does get a bit of sun and also the vinyl on the airbag area and the glove box stops it warping so you, it, it looks horrible when it starts warping yeah it done, it done a lovely job i'm very pleased with that right there we go then that's all done um and it didn't really take long at all it took about an hour or so and it's quite a nice relaxing hour as well just sort of poking seats with cloths and stuff yeah it's quite nice so yeah about an hour or so to do a whole seat um i'll do the other one i might just use uh, the leather cleaner on that rather than anything else i might put leather in the bottle on it after because it really takes five minutes per seat and the back ones i'll just use the cleaner on them so they get a bit dusty no one ever sits in them um only time they're ever used is when they're pulled down and used for extra storage and uh, yeah, they'll just need the uh, leather cleaner and possibly leather in a bottle to uh, bring out their really sm 
But it really does smell of new leather now. That leather in the bottle from Zeno is fantastic. And as I said before, I've got no association with Zeno at all. Um, I've just used their products for absolute years now. And uh, I found they do exactly what I want them to do. So yeah, it doesn't take long at all. And it will protect the leather now. Uh, even if I don't use this car for a while, although I'm sure I will do once I get the courage to go to the garage to fill it back up again. Um, even if I didn't use it for a, for a year or so, then I, at least I know the leather's going to be OK. And in later episodes, we'll go through other things you have to do if you're just going to put a car away for a while. Things like batteries, petrol, and what you do about those, the engine bay, uh, how do you seal the outside of a car? so the sun doesn't damage it if it's not being used. Can you use car covers and things like that? So it's all those sort of things. Can you use a solar charger, for instance, to keep the batteries topped up? We'll talk about those sort of things. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, thanks for all the comments. Always try and answer them as much as possible. And I'll see you next time.